Hello again, my name is Randy Scamhorn and this is the Chairman's Brief. As Chairman of Cobb Board of Education, I have the privilege of serving as the spokesperson for the Cobb School Board. The school board, together with our staff, students, parents, and community, make up our team, striving for our common goal, student success. Recently, Cobb introduced one of our newest schools built using Ed Splash funds, Pearson Middle School. Getting a new school going can be quite a challenge, especially when it comes to involving the community. Here to offer some insights into that is the new principal of Pearson Middle School, Mr. Dean Yoder. Welcome to the program, Dean. Thank you for having me here, I'm okay. excited. We'll, we'll start right off, uh, and, and uh, you're new to Pearson, of course it's brand new, and uh, uh, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Well, the fact that I'm sitting here is a story in itself. Um, grew up in central Pennsylvania, uh, for the first, through sixth grade anyway. Had, a, had one weird year in Syracuse, New York, <laughs> and then uh, spent the final until graduation in Stanton, Virginia. Uh, my parents owned restaurants, so I worked in their restaurants for a while, and then got into a uh, produce procurement company where I was contracting produce and vegetable pricing for uh, major chains, grocery stores and restaurants. Uh, and true story, showed up to work one day and it was locked, it was closed. And wow. at that point in time, I had to make a career choice. Uh, and I was not exactly the best student growing up. I, I struggled through school. But through my struggles, I, I kept on telling myself that maybe getting back to a teaching position, or going to a teaching position, uh, I would be able to tell my story and help students like myself. I've been in education for 15 years now and I've never looked back. Uh, my two children, they went through the Cobb County School District. They are in Dow, Loving Good, and Hillgrove, which has been fantastic. Um, I went to Kennesaw State University and got my degree in middle school education. Uh, from there, I went back to KSU to get my master's and my specialist in educational leadership. So I served two great years at Campbell Middle, and then from there I was fortunate to be promoted to the principal at Fair Oaks Elementary School, which has been the best three years of education that I ever had. But I'll be honest with you, I've never had a bad day in education. It's been awesome. Many of us don't have a straight path like some no. have. And uh, how did you find Cobb County? When our first child was born, we eventually wanted to go to what we felt through conversation research was the best for raising children, and that was Cobb County. Uh, so we actually moved over to West Cobb, but we found our way to Cobb County because of the reputations of the schools. So we came over in 1999. I, we moved from Pittsburgh in 93. Okay. Found our way over to Cobb County in 1999. Well, you're, you're almost a native then. Almost, right. So, these interviews are for our community right. and getting to know all of our uh, team members. And uh, what does community mean to you? So to me, community is, is threefold. The first community you think about is your physical community. This is where your, your, your families are from, your students. The other community is then when you start talking about people with, that have like things in common that want to do the same thing. And that's, that's our teachers. That's everybody that has applied to come and work in our school systems. And then your partners in ed, again, like-minded individuals coming together uh, and they form their own community as well to support you. Okay. How, how do you bring us together when the part of the community says one thing and the other part says another thing uh, on, on a general issue? Sure. Well, you got to be very transparent and open. And what I learned from the three years that I was the principal of Fair Oaks is, you know, being out front of everything, uh, holding town hall meetings, holding pastries with the principal, being in the community, physically going into the neighborhoods and talking, that goes a long way. I mean, at the end of the day, people just want honesty. Uh, when, we, when I moved over to Pearson, you know, it's the same thing. First and foremost was to make sure that all the staff members know coming in what our goal was and what we want, our mission and what we want to accomplish, what we want to become as Pearson pilots, mm -hmm. what we want from our students. And so that was the first thing is to be very transparent to let them know this is who I am as a principal and these are my expectations. Uh, my goal in three years is to have Pearson as the best middle school in Cobb and beyond. Uh, and so it's going to take a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But again, that like community of individuals coming to Pearson, they understand it. And so that was being transparent. 
Then it's to go out and talk to the community after we have everything set and to let them know what the expectations are and how we're going to do it and how you know, we can use their support to be successful. And then from there, it's getting those partners and ed together and get them to understand how they play a vital role, not only within our school, but also within our community to support the endeavors that we're looking to do and the achievements that we're looking for our students. Okay. Well, those are lofty goals. Absolutely. How, how do you get the, uh, uh, why is it so important to involve the entire community? And does it have an impact on the academic goals as well as your other goals? Well, absolutely. Um, everybody has to understand where the ship is going, right? So from my team that's within the building, they understand what they're charged with. How are we going to take the students that we have now and get them to the highest possible level? So when they go off to either Osborne or Campbell, those schools should be able to recognize that's a Pearson student. Well, how do we do that? So getting that message across and, and constant through communication, through professional development, through an open door policy, that's how you set that stage. For our families, again, it's having that communication with them. I speak with them on a monthly basis. And here's another true story. Every single family member has my cell phone number. They can reach me at any given time. They have a need, they have a question. Uh, they don't have to worry about calling through the front and hope that I get the phone call, which my front office staff is great, so I always do. But I wanna make sure it could be something on a Saturday that they need support and help with. They can call me and I can be there for them. So at the same time, I make sure my families understand what we're expecting from their children and what we're going to do to get their children to the next level, because it's a two-way street. This is what we're going to do for you and your child, but this is what we also need from you and your child to make sure that we get to that echelon of being that best school in Cobb County within that three year period and beyond. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot, but again, as a principal, this is what you do. It's about taking care about the community. It's about listening to the community. It's about setting goals for your students and teachers and high expectations, and you go from there. Uh, have you already uh, set up a principal's council or a school council or, or, or maybe both? Or, so we're in the middle of doing that right now. Student council, yeah. maybe. So yeah, it's great questions. So COVID's put a little ringer in everything, obviously, because you know you want to meet with everybody. So the principal council, the principal council is being, uh, we're getting that organized now. We have a meeting this week. We already have the family members ready to take over the PTA, which is fantastic to have a family-led PTA. So our family members, we have six individuals that have already said that they want to be part and be the PTA officers. So that's going to be up and going. So by September, we will have a fully run PTA up and running and we'll have the principal's council. In terms of student government and having a student council, that's one of the books that all also for us, because kids need to understand they have a voice as too. They're part of that community. Sure. And so not only do we want to engage the parents, we want our students to have a voice on what we're doing in the school, what we're doing well, what we can improve upon. So that will be up and running, we're hoping by the end of September, early October. Okay. Uh, now you're in an area where there's a lot of businesses, uh, varied businesses. I know there's car uh, dealers mm -hmm. and there's uh, fast food and, right. and many other things. Have you started pulling in uh, partners in ed or is that still down the road a little bit? No, we're still pulling them in. So here, my philosophy on partners in ed has always been, who's gonna be around when our kids graduate? You know. Uh, and for me, to make those connections, it started with Fair Oaks. So we are working with Northwest Exterminating, who is huge in this area. Not only do we work with them on family engagement nights, but we're also now working with them for them to come in and talk to our science classes about what goes into extermination. Wow. Um, it's also working not just having Zaxby's as a partner because they can help us provide food to teachers. It's also for them to come in and talk to our math classes about measurement, about um, financials, you know, what it takes to run a business. So when I go out to choose businesses, part of that is what they can come in and, and be part of our culture and help and see what they can do in teaching classes. The next course for me is then to partner up with Chattahoochee Tech, Georgia Highlands, Kennesaw State University, because these are the organizations or universities that are in our backyard. These are our these these universities and organizations are where they're going to be going eventually. So again, having them come in, talking about their programs, what they have to offer, because as our eighth graders start to get into high school, then you're talking about move on when ready. You're talking about the CTAE program. We talked about CETA, how that all aligns to going to maybe Chat Tech to Georgia Highlands, or how that will transfer to K Kennesaw State University. So when I start with partners in ed, it's 
you know, again, it's using those organizations that are around in the community, but also connecting it with higher education. Okay. I wonder if our students at any level, you know, right. well, not necessarily elementary, but middle school and high school, if they realize what we're trying to get them ready for. Right. It's, it's interesting. A great story that I can tell you outside of my business was uh, my assistant principal, Dr. Askew. He spent years in the Marine Corps. And I'll never forget this story, and it's a great story that he tells our students. He was, uh, he was part of a two-man team, and basically they were taking out tanks. Uh, and then they were learning how to put, you know, C4 and charges in trees to get trees to drop down. And it was all algebra. And so while they were actually sitting in meetings, he had this panic moment where he just said, I really should have paid attention in my math class <laughs> because that is going to determine if I survive or not yeah. and if I could take out an enemy tank. Yeah. Um, and so when we, when we talk about our kids and we have a lot of great kids that want to go and serve in the military, yeah. sometimes I guess we don't think that we take math for granted and math can be that one thing that could save your life. And he said, you know, he quickly learned algebra very, very fast in the, Ar in the Marine yeah. Corps to save his own hide. But that was an interesting story because just to think that going into the military, all the math that you need for that yeah. uh, to be successful is, we don't think about that until we're there. Well, what are your hopes for a uh, long term uh, with regard to the community, um, like a, alumni uh, involvement? Sure. Or what, what do you see down the road like that? Well, my first long-term goal, again, is being a premier middle school in Cobb County. And with that, that just builds up our community because people move into it. Just like I moved into Cobb because of the reputation of Cobb County schools uh, was it's the same reason I want people to move into the Fair Oaks, Belmont Hills, Green Acres area is because it is a high-flying, functioning school that sets up their students for great success when they move off to high school. Mm -hmm. I would love to have alumni support. Um, I've come to know that middle school is a very difficult area to get alumni support. High schools have it much easier. Yeah. When alumni come back, like Osborne will have great alumni support in Campbell. But what I would like to start doing as our kids matriculate through Osborne and Campbell is keep tabs on them and to see what they do after graduation so they can come back and tell their story because no story is stronger than having someone stand in front of you that lived in your shoes, that can speak yeah for you where you came from and to show that the success that they become because of what they did in, in their opportunity in education. Every so often, I can tell you as my history as a teacher, you'll get a card from a student out of the blue just to say thank you. Yeah. You know, I graduated high school because, you know, I remember what you told me in seventh grade. And, you know, we don't hear that enough, but the fact that that does happen, I think we, we, we need to know that we do impact so many lives that Every so often you'll get that one card to remind you that this is just one voice, but there's so many hundreds of voices out there that would still say the same thing if they ha had the opportunity. When uh, someone that almost drops out of middle school and they get re-motivated uh, and make it through, has their path no yeah, less yeah. dramatic? No, I agree with you. I think sometimes you know, you know, students get stuck in a hard place depending on family, depending on what's going on in their lives, and you know, they struggle. And if they don't have that strong support or that positive voice behind them, you know, they may be out before they even get to the point of graduation. They don't see graduation as something that's for them. And to be able to understand that as an educator, as an administrator, and understand the value of that kind word, uh, being out into the community, mm -hmm. um, trying to make sure that everybody's being taken care of. For me, it's just not about the student. It's also about their families. Sure. Because, you know, now in middle school and high school, it becomes more real. Life becomes more real. In elementary mm -hmm. school, you know, parents kind of shield you a little bit. Yeah. And you don't see the struggles that they go through. But as you start growing older, you start seeing the struggles. And sometimes as a student, you take that upon yourself. And to know that there is someone out there that is, is in your corner, your cheerleader, and willing to, you know, help you, your family out, that goes a long way. And again, I can never... Um, overemphasize the need just to make sure that when we're in that school, every child deserves a smile, a welcome, and a thank you. Okay. Now, uh, to w sort of wrap it up here, we're sure. getting toward the end. Uh, I want to come back to your family. Like, you have two children, mm -hmm. and, and are they still in, in Cobb County, or are they, they already through Cobb County? So they're through Cobb County, but here's an even interesting story. So my son has two sons. Okay. Um, and so one is now at Dow Elementary in the DLI program, the dual language immersion program. 
um, the same school that he went to. Okay. So that's interesting. There's some teachers there that were there when my son was there. Okay. They're now teaching his son. <laughs> so yeah, it's exciting. Okay. Well, so you still have a strong investment in keeping our school system uh, a, an excellent school system as, as it is. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's the best school system. And I'm not saying that because I work every day in Cobb. I've yeah. experienced other another district. Uh, and when we say it's the best place to teach, lead, and learn, hands down, it, it truly is. What's the culture you're trying to uh, develop and instill at Pearson Middle School? That everybody can succeed. I mean, that's, that's the easiest Good. thing for me to say. That every student can succeed. And it's funny that you say that because today we met as an admin team with all the students. Um, and the one okay. thing that I want to remind them is you have the ability to succeed. And I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm the living uh, example of that. You know, and in my mid-30s, I changed my whole career and went into education. I you know, started teaching when I was 39, 40. Yeah. Um, and it just takes some effort and belief in yourself that you can do it. Okay. I just wish I would have done it earlier, like back in middle school. But we, you wouldn't be the person you are. That's probably true, yeah. I didn't, well, wouldn't have a really good story, I guess. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. How, how might people watching this help their school engage in the community more? Okay, well, you know, I, there's one thing I can honestly say. I think our schools do a wonderful job in getting out into the community. You look at the Twitter feeds, you look what they're doing at Belmont Hills, Green Acres, Osborne. I mean, they're really engaged with their community. Um, the biggest thing that's always helped me is I would also send surveys out to the community, the families, and my, also my community with inside and say, what can we do better to help you and support you? And we do the same thing, surveys the students. So for me, you know, look back and say, hey, what haven't we tried yet? And try it. But again, um, I will say that I'm just always amazed when I get to see what other schools are doing, and I'm not going to fib to you. There's sometimes I've stolen their ideas because they were so good. <laughs> so, so not steal, borrow. So I would say, uh, you know, if you see something great at another school and you're not doing it, try it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. Well, as we r wrap it up, does anything come to mind you want to add? No, I'm just, you know, thrilled to have the opportunity to sit here and talk about Pearson and our community. Uh, being part of the Cobb County School District is, has been... Uh, probably a life-changing thing for me uh, that that all started at Campbell Middle School and now I'm sitting here with you okay. uh, as a principal uh, so, I just it's been great super well Dean thanks for sharing with us today and thank you for watching be sure to join me again next week to discuss some of the great things happening in Cobb County School District have a good day